So I assume you can see full screen. Yeah. From my PowerPoint. Yep. I can tell it's highlighted. Yay. Okay, so we're going to talk about mental health and IT safeguarding our most precious resource, which is us people. So as she mentioned, I'm Tracy Baggiano. Ooh, we don't want to insert any slides. What's it doing? Want it going to the next slide? Okay, I do a lot of stuff, as you can tell by my icons. The easiest way to reach me is to go to my Twitter account. The DMs are open. Or you can go to DatabaseSuperhero.com and find the email address and email me. LinkedIn is also available. I don't check it as often. It does email me when people leave me messages, but, you know, Twitter's probably the best way. Um, as far as my advocacy work, I do volunteer for the North Carolina Guardian Ad Litem Program, with it, which is a foster kids advocate in court. So I make sure they navigate through foster care system and help them find a permanent home, whether that's going back to their family or being adopted out or what have you. I'm up to 60 plus kids now. I was only at 50 when Summit came around. So I'm at 63 currently. I keep up in the ante. Um, I do have my mental health first aid from the USA. I don't know which countries are doing that. I did look that up at a, another conference and there are more conferences that are doing that. Um, I like to mention speakingmentors.com. I'm a, the website admin for that and a mentor on that website to try to get more people speaking out in the community. So if you are interested in getting a mentor to start helping you speak, please feel, feel free to go out and look at that website to find someone to help you. And I also uh, volunteer with the Disability Rights in North Carolina on their mental health council. So I know a little bit more about mental health from that. So I, I do quite a bit of volunteer work outside of the uh, SQL community and the rest are just free little SQL icons. So I gave this presentation back for the WIT chapter and their WIT mental health day. And then somebody tweeted out about how horrible my experiences are. Are my slides actually moving? Because I don't see them moving on one side. We just have the, uh, the cover. There we go. How's that? Yeah. Perfect. OK, yay. Because they were only moving on one side, and then my other screen it wasn't working. So you haven't missed much as far as recording goes. You've just gotten to the good stuff. So. I, I presented at the WIT Mental Health Day and somebody tweeted this out as a sidebar that, you know, Tracy has worked in some horrifically toxic places. If you're listening to her stories and it sounds familiar, get out of there, basically. You don't deserve to be there. And I've also added a disclaimer on here that, you know, suicide will be mentioned during this presentation. If you're thinking of suicide, please reach out for help. And I will mention that again every time that I mention suicide because that is a big topic when it comes to mental health. As far as objectives go, we will discuss workplace causes of mental health challenges, discuss ways we can help ourselves, discuss ways we can help others that we see that are struggling, discuss how our employer can provide help, provide plenty of resources for you to walk away and in. I think I got five or six slides of links that you can go to and look, look at things to, to help, you away, help you with. So I plan on providing the slide deck for you to upload somewhere or you can download it off my website either way. A little bit more about who I am because I have to put more disclaimers out there. I'm not a mental health professional. I have no professional training on this besides my little itty bitty certificate that took me like two days to get. Um, I do suffer from mental health issues. I, I do have bipolar, PTSD, and anxiety issues. So I've got my own separate set of issues that have nothing to do with work. But my work has been able to affect my mental health. And my work has, uh, had, has been affected by my mental health as well. So I've had times where I've had to miss work because my mental health is just been stressed out by things at home and work has stressed me out to the point where I've had to miss work as well. So I've had it go both ways. And then I decided to start talking publicly about it and raise some awareness about it. Like before the pandemic hit, not 
too close before the pandemic, only to December before the pandemic. So I almost made it, you know, before the pandemic hit, you know, well, I did make it before the pandemic hit. And then I've done a lot of research on the topic as it relates to IT, because this is a general topic that's not just database related. I did uh, present this at a PHP conference as well. So it can just be general IT related. So I got this quote from somewhere and I can't remember where, so it's here. So mental health isn't just mental illness, it's part of being, being human. So I equivalent this to mental health is just as important as your physical health. If you don't have both, you're you're kind of tanking. So, so what does positive mental health look like? It's realizing your full potential. And my slide deck doesn't want to scroll. Cope, coping with the stresses of life, working productively, and making meaningful contributions to to your communities. So when you're able to do, do these four things, you're able to set up your life for success, basically. You're, you're able to, you know, be product, productive at work and you're able to, you know, get those promotions and, you know, your boss is happy with you. You're able, when a stress comes on in life, you're, you're just able to let it roll off and, and you're able to, you know, make, make your life be, feel fulfilled and you, you make contributions in, in your community, whether it be going to church or volunteering with something else or just, you know, helping out your, at your kid's school or something just simple as that. So in the U.S., 25% uh, of people suffer from a mental illness in a given year. In IT, it's 42%. So we've got a slightly higher rate I don't know what it is in other industries because I, I did not research other industries. So some of them are higher. I, I suspect the healthcare industry is really high right now, given the pandemic and everything that's going on. I did do a little bit of research to get another country in here. So the UK is at 48%. So they're slightly higher than the average norm. So these are just a general list of mental health disorders. We're going to concentrate on the fact that work can cause anxiety and depression. And those are the two main things that it can cause. So we're just going to concentrate on those because those are the ones that that pop up as being problems. So. Because my slide deck not wanting to work again. What is up with that? More about why I'm speaking out now. I have a lot of personal experience, so why not? <laughs> I'm tired of the stigma around it. I, I faced a lot of stigma around the fact that I did miss a, miss a sequel Saturday when I hit a hospital stay. And we'll, we'll talk about the debacle of 2018 on the next slide. And people need to realize they're not alone. They're not like this kid walking in this picture and, and not all left alone and, and need some help. A lot of people feel very guarded and afraid to let anybody know that they're having any issues and they lose, lose confidence in themselves. And the world gets very colored in that lens where everything feels dark and gloomy. And then I took a look at the stats and was like, you know, this is a prevalent issue that needs to be talked about. A little bit more about my story about the debacle of summer of 2018, which is only three years ago. I mean, I, I survived it, but not by very much. So, um, I had a bunch of work stressors that happened that year, and it started off with um, I started a new job. Then I went into that job, and two months, two weeks into it, they decided to lay people off. And then I went to Sequel Saturday out in L.A. and this big old boxcar truck decided to hit my rental car and, and spin me around in a circle. And that wasn't fun. And, you know, that caused lots of stress. And then I had a crisis with a friend that I had to fix. And then I was traveling to two Sequel Saturdays a month and I switched therapists. And then, you know, you know a, a company that only has 40 people and that shrinks to 20 people, they don't really need a full time DBA you know, in real life. That's just how it works, you know. 
Just saying. <laughs> so I was in panic over my job during all of this going on. So this just led me into a hospital stay where I got very manic and very suicidal and ended up in a, basically a psych hospital for a week. So I mentioned my diagnosis before. I have bipolar and PTSD and anxiety. So I've gotten those a little under control until stressors hit me. So some work stressors I've had over the years are just being on call, you know, 24-7 on call is, is, is like crazy. Um, using my phone all the time to keep an eye on things is just, I'm, I'm terrible at it. I think we all should like not have email on our phone until the week we're on call and then shut it, delete it on the weeks we're not on call just so we can stay out of touch with things. Um, doing development work, uh, we're all writing code to uh, automate things. We're all doing development work. I used to be a developer, but now I'm really still a developer because I'm writing PowerShell and things like that. Um, I've suffered a few layoffs and things like that that have stressed me out over the years. And there, there's just a bunch of work stressors over the years that I've had that have caused me to miss work and stuff and, and stressed me out to the point where I couldn't function at work. And I, I have a bunch of stories that go with other stressors. So some more stats is 86% uh, of people based in IT would not discuss with their employer at all their, their mental health. 44% aren't even aware of what healthcare coverage they have that covers their mental health. That's just like 63% say their employer has not formally discussed mental health at work. I'm lucky at DocuSign that our CEO has mentioned mental health in an all hands on meeting because we had a person, I think it was in the UK, that ran a 5K or something that uh, raised proceeds for a mental health charity, and then we matched it as part of DocuSign. So that, that brought up awareness at our company. So more, more stats are just worldwide and not directly related to IT. Um, $1 trillion is just lost to productivity every year globally. That's a lot of money being burnt up because people can't be pr productive just because they get depression or anxiety or, or another disorder that's going on. And it can be treated if people are getting help and their companies have health care for mental health. 210.5 billion is just depression alone. I mean, that's, you know, that's an easy thing to get treated and to get help for. And people can recognize the signs of that pretty easily. This is where I do my suicide warning. If, if you're thinking about suicide, please seek help. There's a lot of people in the SQL community that if you know them, you can reach out to them. Even if you don't know them, reach out to some of the people that are willing to talk to you and reach out to a helpline. Please just don't do anything. Trigger warning. 69 billion are lost to suicide alone. It was the 10th leading cause of death in 2019 in the US, 18th worldwide in 2016. 80,000 people die from suicide a year. That's a death for every 20 attempts. Um, here's the name of a few people in the SQL community that I know for sure that you can talk to about suicide, including myself. Um, but definitely please seek help. Talk to your friends and family when you're having issues. There are hotlines to call just about in every country that you can call and seek help. They'll talk you down. They'll, they'll get you, you know, more serious help if you need it. Plan ahead if you're going, if you know you get like this have a plan for what you're going to do when you start thinking down that road. I have a contingency plan in place for when I get like this so that I don't do anything. Face it, stupid is <laughs> the best word I got for it. It's basically a permanent solution to a temporary problem and we don't want to go there. And tell your friends ahead of time what they can do to help you when you're you're like that because you know sometimes they don't know what to do because they they haven't had to deal with this. And definitely get in touch with a doctor or therapist. Hopefully you have one if you're consistently having these type of thoughts. This is the uh, WHO mental health suicide rate map for 2016. So um, the U.S. is pretty up there with Canada. Uh, Russia looks really bad. I had someone on a call tell me Russia isn't that bad, but I, you know, who do you believe, the who or somebody on a call? 
I don't know which one. I'm, I'm going to go with the who, because you know, they put a chart together. So some workplace causes of, of um, things causing anxiety and depression are, are they're just really four things. Stress, burnout, harassment, and bullying. I've had all of these happen to me. I got such great stories. Let's see if we can remember them all. So hopefully we can. So stress and burnout kind of go together because stress causes burnout. So in our survey of IT people of 11,000 people, 56% of people report that they're stress and burnout. Now there's this fantastic little quiz you can take, burnoutindex.org, that'll tell you if you're burnt out. Now, when I first took this, when I was putting this presentation together, I was like, I'm not burnt out. Well, this thing told me I was. And when I looked at it more clearly, I was like, yeah, I really am. And I don't want to take it again because I know right now I am. I'm putting together a pre-con for summit and a regular session. I don't have time to breathe. And I'm volunteering with 10 foster kids at the same time. There's just not time to breathe right now. Now, after November, maybe it'll die down. We shall see. As I volunteer for everything, I, I learned to say the word no is what my friends tell me. So stress and burnout can be caused from like being on call all the time. I used to have a job where the pe two people that were on call with me never answered the phone. Like in the middle of the night, they just would not answer the phone. So like my boss would never do anything about it. He would just tell the people to call me. So they got to the point they didn't call my boss. They just called me directly. And it was just like, ah. And then they had this one system that they put me on call for 24-7. And then it was just like, you know, I couldn't take my kid to a basketball game without getting called while I was out. So I was like traveling with my computer everywhere I went. And, and I had this job for 10 years. Don't ask me why I stayed there. Well, I know why I stayed there that long. I, I did this so I could get my kid through high school. So just just so I can get it in there. By the way, it says people are waiting in the lobby. But um, just so you can let people in. Um, but, uh, but being on call is a big stressor. Even when you're not on 24-7. You can, you can still have issues with just your normal two-week schedule, your one-week schedule, because you, you feel like you can't make any mistakes. You can't take the system down 24-7. You know, you, you've got to keep that uptime up. You, you know, th that that just is a lot of pressure to be on call, just in general, even if you're not a 24-7 DBA all the time. And you got to keep those 24-7 uptimes, even if you're not on call and you're just watching the system during the day, you know, what happens if you make a mistake? You gotta, you know, plan everything and you gotta, you know, make sure you have back out plans and you just gotta, you know, keep the, everything's up because everybody, everybody wants five nines and it's just like a nightmare to keep things up. Meeting deadlines. I mean, I, I had a job one time where sometimes I was given a deadline to at 5 p.m. one day to have something done at 8 a.m. the next day. And it was not something that was easy to do. Like I had to design this one thing in, I think it was ActiveX where you could build a NASCAR car and put logos on it and numbers on it and stuff. And it, w it wasn't a very easy thing to do by the next day. I got it done, but I stayed up all night doing it. And it probably wasn't the best thing for my mental health at the time. Being constantly on, this is where we like got to put our cell phones up and not check our messages after hours and things like that. Um, if you're on all the time, you're going to cause yourself to be stressed and burnt out. And the burnout is usually caused by prolonged intense stress. So if you go through these four things and you're constantly doing it, you're you're just constantly going to you're going to hit the burnout stage at one point. And you're going to take your guitar and you're going to slam it into the something or you're going to slam something else. I just thought the guitar picture was cool. And and you feel like you're out of control. You don't have any control of what you're working on at work. And you just feel like you can't do anything to control your situation at work because you've got all this stuff going on. You gotta meet your deadlines, you gotta be on all time, you gotta be on call, you gotta keep everything up. And you just have no control over your projects you're working on. It it just it just causes stress and burnout. Now, harassment and bullying, these kind of go together as well. So yelling and rude comments. Yes, I've had these as well. So I had a job one time where 
I had a DBA that when I was away from my desk, something broke. I come back to my desk and he's yelling at me wanting to know what I did. Now, I'm trying to figure out what I could have did while I was not at my desk. And he is yelling so loud that the Oracle DBA went and got my boss to, to tell them that, you know, he was yelling at me. Uh, rude comments. Just, you know, people um, didn't like my clothes. They didn't like my white socks one time that I was wearing with my dress pants. I don't know what white socks have to do with anything, but, you know, I've also seen... Uh, there was this manager that was like five foot two and all these six foot tall managers picking on him for his, his height. And that's just, that goes into the bullying category or making fun of co colleagues. Um, I had colleagues that were making fun of people for what, what they ate. There was a Hindu guy that was eating, you know, his food because the smell of his food is different than American food. And they would just would constantly make comments about it and make fun of him for his religion and stuff like that. It's just not cool. Sexual harassment. Now, I, I used to have a colleague that just constantly stood over my cubicle looking at me and stuff like that. And he spied on everything I did on the Internet. If I ran like a 5K, he would go and find out how I did and, and all that stuff. And he followed me around the office sometimes. But we also had this other guy that had a Playboy magazine and Playboy calendar in his office. And we reported, somebody reported it to HR and HR told him it was okay to keep it as long as he put a sticky note over, sticky note over the offensive parts. Which I don't think that's right, but HR said it was right. And then we already mentioned not picking on people for their religion. So you don't pick on people for their religion, uh, sexual orientation, anything, their age, sexual orientation, their ethnicity, religion, anything. You just, you know, you're as nice to people as you want them to be to, to you. Now, how mental health can affect anyone? It can make you sad or irritable. I, I, I go on both spectrums of this. When I get depressed, I get really down. I can get really irritated with my kid. I mean, he, he pushes my buttons when I'm sad sometimes. And, you know, I have to watch myself. But you can go to either spectrum of this when you're getting depressed. Like I said, you can have extreme mood changes where you start having highs where you got a lot of energy or very lows where you can't get out of bed. You start having excessive fears, worry, and or anxiety, and that's where you start, you know, you start saying something, and you don't feel like you can, um, you know, you start, you say something, and you start fearing that you might have said the wrong thing, and you worry about it constantly, and then you get anxiety over it, and you just have anxiety in general about what's going on around in life, and you start pulling away from people and activities in your life, which right now we've had to do because of COVID, so that's not a very good thing, so... You know, get on some happy hours with Zoom or call people on the phone to help prevent that. And you start having changes in your sleeping and eating habits. You might be sleeping less or more and eating or, or eating less or more or eating a lot of ice cream like I do. And you have trouble concentrating at work. I, I have a big time problem with this when I, I get depressed. So um, I've had mental health kind of go ne negatives and positives for me. So, I, one, I've missed work. I was just out of work for the whole month of June because I had a whole bunch of stressors just add up to the point where I couldn't take it. I hit hit mania. Uh, I just had complete lack of focus. I've had that with or without missing work. And lack of motivation to get anything done. Now, I do have some positives because of my bipolar. You guys probably won't have these, but I get the extreme energy and I can stay up all night and get stuff done. Like, let me patch your servers. Yes, I can do it. I work well under work stress sometimes. Like, I can take off and, like, I've only had five hours sleep this week because I, I did a red eye home on Monday night from L.A. And then I only slept three hours, like, three hours that night and I slept four hours last night, so seven hours sleep. And I, you know, give me some stress right now and I'll be able to handle it because I haven't had any sleep. Uh, let me have normal sleep and I can't handle it as well. So this, this is a chart that is for firefighters, but I think it fits well with doing a self-evaluation on how you are doing mentally, especially with COVID going on. 
So we're going to go through this so you can kind of see if you're thriving or surviving or struggling or in crisis. So you can know where you stand in as, as your mental health it goes. So thriving is when you've, you've got this under control. You're calm and steady and you've got minor mood fluctuations. So nice and calm and easy going. You're able to take things in stride. You've got consistent performance at work, no issues with getting anything done. You're able to take feedback and adjust to changes at work. So your boss is able to tell you, hey, you know, you need to do this or that. And you're just like, oh, OK. And you make changes to, to that and you're able to focus. That's that's a big thing to be able to do. You're also able to communicate effectively. Some people just, you know, shut down when they get past the stage and, and can't verbalize what they need to verbalize you, your sleep patterns are normal and so is your appetite now if you move into the next stage where you're surviving something isn't quite right you're not you know in a, in a crisis you start getting nervous and sad and your mood starts fluctuating a little bit your performance starts getting a little bit inconsistent not not too terribly bad you get more, more easily overwhelmed with tasks and you get a little bit more irritated with things more easily. You have an increased need for control over things and difficulty adjusting to changes. So when your boss gives you that feedback or he changes a project, you're just like, no, I don't really want to do that right now. And then you start having trouble sleeping or eating. And you have activities and relationships you used to enjoy that you just don't find interesting or even stressful to do I mean I, I started playing Animal Crossing again the other day and there were so many weeds I was just like no there's too much to do of course I'm probably not in the surviving category I think I'm in the next category over um, but you start getting muscle tension and low energy and headaches so you might need a massage to help you out with this now I'm in the struggling and I can't keep up. I can't keep this up stage. I, I think I might belong in this stage. So you have persistent fear, panic, anxiety, anger, persistence of sadness and hopelessness. I, I'm, I definitely got the persistent fear thing going on that I'm not going to get my pre-con done in time. So that's one, one of the reasons I say I'm in this category. But you start getting a little bit more panicky about things and you start getting more sadness and you start feeling hopeless about your situation. You're exhausted. I'm exhausted. Seven hours sleep in two days and I've got my pre-con to work on. So you got poor performance and difficulty making decisions or concentrating. Yeah, I don't like making decisions right now. So, I mean, and, and it's hard to make decisions when you start feeling exhausted. So that, that's what the, these things lead to is you start feeling exhausted, then your performance goes down, and then you can't make decisions and you can't concentrate. Then, then you know, you've got the fatigue and the aches or pains. Again, you might get a massage there to help you out or do some yoga or something like that to help you out. Then you start avoiding your friends and coworkers and that stuff. And with COVID, we're doing that anyways, but that's where we need to set up Zoom or phone calls and things like that to try to interact with people more. And you're getting restless and disturbed sleep. And you might be self-medicating with substances or food, huh, ice cream, and other numbing activities. Now, this is when you're in crisis and you, you just think you can't survive this. You, you know, your your stress is disabling. You're losing loss of function. This is where you basically can't get out of bed. You're having panic attacks over things. You might have be nightmares or flashbacks about things that have happened at work. You're not, unable to fall or stay asleep. You have intrusive thoughts. You got thoughts of self-harm or suicide. Again, call a hotline, talk to somebody, a friend, family, somebody from the sequel community, somebody you trust, trigger warning. You get easily enraged or aggressive. You make careless mistakes because you don't have the ability to focus. That, that can be costly at work. You start feeling numb, lost, and out of control. And you withdraw from relationships. And again, the dependence on substance, food, or other not uh, numbing activities to cope, including ice cream. That's my favorite one to go to. So those, those are the four categories that you might want to check yourself to see if you're in.
And this chart will be at the end of the presentation as well, so it's a little bit easier to find because I do like that chart so people can check out where they're at and trying to figure out what area they're in to see if they need to try to dial things down a little bit to help themselves out. So here are 10 ways to help avoid burnout in IT. One is to take some time off from work. Hopefully you got some PTO. I mean, we, we're not given enough time. I don't think sometimes in some countries. So, you know, take some time off, take some mental health days. Just don't do anything. Relax. Identify some stressful tasks at work and try to talk to your boss about, you know, splitting up those tasks and or offloading them onto someone else that may have more knowledge about that particular topic. Unplug at the end of the day, ditch your phone, ditch your computers, get rid of anything, do some hobbies around computers. Of course, hobbies, I think, is another topic. Eat well and exercise. You'll be surprised at how much that helps, even though you're you've got other things going on. Socialize with people as much as you can. Can I hear a question? Yes, sorry. There is a question in the chat. Someone's uh -uh. asking what they can do if they're denied personal time off. Oh, that sucks. Um, well, when it gets denied, you might have to go above your boss's head and try to tell someone why you need time off or tell your boss why you need time off. Because you're going to need, you know, you're going to have to tell them you got burnout and tell them you need some time to rest, I think. That, that would be my first first go at it is, you know, tell them, you know, things are stressful right now. And I think, you know, it's time to to I need a day or two to relax. OK, I think they're typing right now, so we'll see. OK. And your boss may not be understanding, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. This person had also mentioned um, possibly some bullying at work. So everyone knows I've tried to put some, oh, I'll read that in just a moment. I have tried to put some resources in the chat with the Distress Center, Access Mental Health, and 211. Um, so yeah, this person's cat has passed away and they can't work properly. The boss says it's just a cat and can't miss the deadline, which, our pets are our family, really. Yeah, my cat's my baby. Yeah. Yeah, I'm imagining if I, I have parrots and I'm imagining that and I would not be okay. Yeah. Yeah, your boss is just not understanding. And I don't know what to tell you to get your boss to be understanding, to be honest, because bosses suck sometimes. Uh, they're asking if they should quit um it's possible it might be a situation where you might want to look for another job um because you might find a more understanding boss but you know you would you would have to interview that boss a little bit and see how understanding he actually is. I've gotten lucky the last couple of jobs I had. I had an understanding boss, but I had a 10 year un understanding boss. Yeah. <laughs> um, someone else is also asking uh, recommendations on how to socialize. It was, uh, I'm just going to read word for word because I feel <laughs> a little weird about how I'm saying things. I was talking about this on Reddit the other day and most people don't know how to socialize anymore. I quit drinking in 2003, and I feel like I lost all my friends from that. Um, I can say locally I'm involved in a lot of the concert and live event scene. There are sober groups that like to go have fun at events as well. To maybe I don't know how to access them. I know they show up and let us know they're setting up a sober zone. Yeah, I find there's a lot of groups that you can find on Meetup to, like, like go find people to socialize with, but with COVID, that's kind of hard right now. Um, right now, the best I've been doing is finding people that are, I know I've got a Zoom session where we've got some people in the SQL community that are doing, quote, happy hour, but not drinking. <laughs> yeah. Well, one, or, one or two of them are drinking, the rest of us aren't. But um, 
I found from just hang, hanging out for a couple hours and and talking. Yeah. But you may you may find a couple of coworkers that are willing to do that if if you have access to a Zoom or a Teams or something like that and do it after hours and maybe invite some few other people that you know that aren't part of work yeah. and because it's hard it's hard to socialize right now with COVID. And then any outside interest you have, like running or hiking or church or anything like that, there's usually groups on Meetup that have those type of things that you can find to get some more socialization in. Um, um, I, I know it's hard with drinking because I gave up drinking at some point. I don't remember what year it was, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll put that out there as well. It's not in my slide deck, but I, I um, did have a problem with that at one point. Something I found very helpful uh, for me um, was Roll20 and playing RPG games with my favorite is Spectaculars, but also there's D&D &D, um, and some really fun community that way. Um, someone else is mentioning... Um, do I have to join co-workers at lunch if I'm a loner? Um, I heard that's how office politics work, and I was let go after probation because I don't lunch with co-workers. Pre-COVID days, how to tell people it's not my style. I also saw you mention, and I, I don't want to mention your disability to the whole group, but I did see it in the chat. Um... And That's I just lame that they let you go I for know, that, by the way. I honestly have the same disability. <laughs> and I find those situations myself to be challenging. Um, uh, I, I'm a I loner, will, too. I don't like being around people. Right. I, I, I have I, to force myself to be around people because, like, my yeah. anxiety kicks up. Yeah, and I find... I'm okay kind of online, but in person, I tend to look at my shoes and folks don't like that. <laughs> One person, like at Sequel Saturdays at like the speaker dinners, I go find a corner to hide in and then people go drag me out. There you go. <laughs> That's literally what happens to me. A resource for a local organization for this person in the chat as well, if, if that's okay. Like maybe, I don't know if it helps to not feel alone. Um, but there's, I can send you a resource. I'll just pop it in the chat for folks. One moment. Yeah, if you got any local resources to help them out, that would be great because I don't have any in Calgary. So, yeah. but yeah, it's it's tough socializing. It's tough when you have a disability that makes it hard to socialize because of things. It, it makes it tough when, you know, you, you quit a habit and you lose all your friends. Um because those are the people you're used to socializing with. So yeah. you've got to develop what, I, I think I have someone here develop hobbies away from the computer. So if you develop a new hobby, you can usually find other people to hang out with to help you with the socializing and get you away from the people that, that take care of the drinking part. But if you have an overall disability that makes it hard for you to socialize, which I can kind of guess what that is because I know someone that has a disability that makes it hard for him to socialize that spoke at Summit last year. Um, <laughs> so I might be able to guess what it is, but uh, he's talked about it at our user group and he has a hard time being at our user group sometimes. And um, so he um, he has, has a hard time with it and um, so we kind of make make a point of talking to him, but not pushing him to talk. You know what I mean? So people socialize differently, and I think it's a little of what you say. Don't make fun of all the other things, but some of us. Sorry, how do I say? Some of us socialize differently, and yeah. that's not wrong. I think we need to be more accepting about. Um, different communication styles. Yeah. Everybody has their own style of how they want to talk to people. I mean, some people want, want to be one-on-one -on -one with somebody and some people don't want to be, you know, like, like to me, it'd be intimidating for me to have to go into a work situation and eat lunch with all my colleagues. 
Like, I've had to do it because I've flown out to Seattle to see all my colleagues, but it was like, ah, because I was a new kid. <laughs> and then I've never seen them again. <laughs> but it was like, I'm sitting at a table full of strangers, but you guys might be working in person, but it's still just like, you know, I don't every day want to sit at lunch with people. Yeah. Um, it's, it's hard and I have struggled and I have had workplaces that get upset. For example, um, sorry, I don't mean to overshare. I hope I'm oh, not. Oh, no problem. Um, I we got time. Christmas parties make me, they're loud, they're <laughs> bright, they can be not, not comfortable. Oh, um, no yeah, they, and that particular workplace liked quite a very <laughs> overstimulating environment, <laughs> to say the least. But yeah, so, I mean, everyone is different. And, you know, sometimes reach out to maybe the person you wouldn't think to reach out to in your office. And yeah, we sh you know, it's good if we try to take care of each other and, and help each other out. Yeah, I have the same problem with my mental health stuff. I don't have anybody in my office I can go to because I don't know who else struggles. So I have to keep it to myself. Of course, I'm out and about talking about it, but no one has confided in me that they're having the same problems where I work. So yeah. I've had people in the community confide in me. Not many, but a few. So, but, you know. That's Are why I'm talking about it, trying to at least pull out the mental health pieces and try to get people talking about it and destigmatize it. Um, but I, I can tell from from what what you're talking about, there is a there is a uh, summit session on autism in okay. IT that was done last year and it was done again for another group. It's actually going to be done again this year for summit, I think. A similar session by Chris Foss. And he has right. autism. If that's the disability I'm thinking of that you guys might have, so. <laughs> that, I'm open about it. Um, I know this person wrote in the chat and I, I'm trying to respect people's privacy. Um, I think there's more of us than people think. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe there is, and I just didn't want to out anybody, but I think I can, you know, based on the description, yeah. Chris is just like that, so and he's open about it because he did a talk last year and he's doing a similar talk this year. At um, Twitter handle and I'll pop, pop that in the chat. Um, let me go try to find it because he has don't a weird worry. Twitter handle. Okay, don't worry about it right now. I'll I'll try to okay. find it for everybody. His name is Chris Voss, and if you, yeah, I'll I'll try it with a V, not a F, in my description there. Okay. Um, I'll go. Is there anybody else with any questions? Okay. Sorry to interrupt your. Oh, uh, no problem. We got some good questions. So, develop an escape plan. Get away from people. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was next. <laughs> but do do develop a way where you can get away from things that are burning you out and take making you stressful. Um, if eating with people's one of them, you've got to do it. I mean, you can't, you can't eat with people every day, but develop a way to, you know, get away from people, work in a different part of the building, something like that. We used to have rooms at one company where we could go into that were quiet places. Most places don't have that though, unfortunately. So, um, we, we, you know, do the best you can there to try to develop some quiet space to go and be on your own. Definitely get plenty of sleep because that helps you rest up and get past your burnout. Uh, try to cross chain your coworkers and what you're doing so you're not the only one that knows how to do something. That way, you know, you don't get burnt out and end up in the hospital with, a, you know, high blood pressure and stuff. I know someone who did that. And learn to say no on tasks. You may have to push back on your boss if you have too much stuff going on. Or, or even in your personal life, I'm, I'm pretty bad about not pushing back. Otherwise, I wouldn't have 10 foster kids I'm advocating for at the same time. 
So things you can do for yourself to help you out once you get stressed out and burn out. One is just to take care of yourself. We've talked about some of these eat well, exercise and sleep are the three crucial things you can do. Develop some hobbies away from the computer. I know some people that, you know, put put together Legos, put together puzzles, um, make their own little miniature sets of things and paint them. Um, try to get away from social media as you can. Um, if you like Twitter, uh, Chrissy Lemire has a list of words you can mute that makes Twitter so much better. And I forgot to put the link in here again. Uh, I always mean to put the link in here and I forget. But it just like gets rid of all the politics and all the gun shootings and all that stuff you don't want to see. Um, you guys might need light therapy. You're up further north. So um, use some light therapy in your office just to get you some more vitamin D and get you get you more sunshine like stuff going on. Try some relaxation training like yoga or meditation. Just give yourself 10 minutes a day to like clear your brain. And if COVID permits right now, spend time with friends and family, even if it's just FaceTime or a short Zoom session. Just, you know, get some some time in with your friends and family. That that always helps people feel better if if they're nice friends and family. Um, you should be able to get help from your boss, except for this one guy who has a jerk of a boss. Um, talk to HR if you need to, if you think HR will be helpful. Um, talk to a friend about what's going on. I know, you know, with, with your cat dying, that's what I'd be doing. I'd be getting help from anybody I could just to help help me feel better. And my, my cat's sleeping in a chair beside of me. And I don't know what I would do without her because she's like, you know, my best buddy. Uh, this makes me sad. Um, um, go see a therapist if, if your depression and stuff starts getting really bad and and see a doctor if you if you start developing overwhelming anxiety and depression. What we can do as a friend is listen non-judgmentally because um, you can sometimes you listen to friends and you start judging what they're thinking about and the best thing you can do is just listen and not say anything sometimes. But if you're going to say something, ask questions that show you care. Don't don't ask questions that are just like, why don't you exercise? That makes everything better. I have friends that tell me stuff like that. Uh, be, be patient with people because they're, they're slow to talk about what's going on. They, it takes it takes a while to get get them to open up. Don't be critical of what they're saying. You don't you don't want to come out and say, you know, I don't know why you worry about that. That's nothing to worry about. Check in on friends you hadn't heard from in a while. They're, they may be struggling if you hadn't heard from them. Don't be confrontational. Don't, you know, get all up in their face about whatever's going on and tell them, you know, hey, you should be doing this. Hey, you should be doing that. And, and if they if you have honest concerns about what's going on, you know, do talk to them about it. Just be friendly about it. But not to say to people now, all these things have been said to me by people, so... That's where I get this list from. Just pull yourself together, you know. You, that, you know, when I'm depressed, that that'll do it. You know, snap out of it, snap my fingers. Just pray about it. I love when my churchy friends say this. They told me I, I made God too little by not praying about it. You have the same illness as my friends, such and such, and they do this, that, and the other, and that's what you should do to fix it. Just distract yourself. Now, that to a certain degree on how low level you are could work, but most likely won't if you have severe enough anxiety and depression on what's going on. And my favorite, you don't need medication. Yeah, I'm on medicine. I'm just going to stop it. Not other things. Stop acting crazy. I'm the only one that gets to use the crazy word because I'm the one that has disorders. Just don't worry about it. Yeah, I, I really can't do that. Cheer up. Uh, yeah, I'm depressed. Can't do that. Therapy is for people who are weak. My dad told me that one. Things will be better in the morning. Isn't that with aspirin? And stop focusing on the bad stuff. And I know that is a good thing to try to do, but it's very hard to do when you're depressed.
what to say to people. You know, you want to help people out. So what you can say to people is you can be honest with me. Yeah, you know, I've seen the comment about, you know, be thankful you have you have a job. This is where that disclaimer at the beginning goes up. Look for another job if people are treating you like crap. Like that tweet said, I don't know if you were on here for that disclaimer. Do you, do you want to go for a walk with me? Now, one thing I learned in that first aid class was uh, being uh, at a table and directly in front of each other is more confrontational than being side by side. So if you go for a walk, people are more liable to open up with you. Plus, it gets them out and gets them a little bit of endorphins and exercises. So you're kind of covering two bases at one time. If you know they're seeking therapy and uh, doctors and stuff, you can ask them how their treatment's going so that you're showing an honest, you know, uh, interest in what's going on. And you can ask them if you can help them find help if you think they need help, you know, if, you, if you're that close to the person. Things not to say to what, oh yeah, what else to say to people? How are you really doing? Instead of just how you're doing, you know, try to really get how they're doing out of them. Do you want to go out and do something? That sometimes will lift people's spirit if you get them out of the house to do something. Of course, COVID's messing that up. I'm so glad you were in my life. You know, remind them that, you know, you want them to be in your life. You don't want them not, not to be there and you, you know, you want them to stay in your life. And remind them of good times that have happened, you know, rem reminisce about things so that they un understand that, you know, you really are glad that they're in your life and you bring up good memories and that, that will help them out. So what we can make our employers do to help us achieve wellness, hopefully, is you know, the employers, if they can create open vacation policies, that would help us out a lot so we can take more mental health days. Offer more flexible work arrangements so that like if you're if you're more of a morning person or a nighttime person, you can come in late or stay later. Um, don't be like my boss and tell me to go to lunch. I mean, go to doctors during lunchtime because doctors take lunch as well. On our 40 hour work week, because people that work 55 hours or more are more likely to suffer from dementia later in life. That is a great thing to suffer from, don't you think? Just because you worked overtime in your earlier career. Respect boundaries. If people have boundaries around their work schedule and they need to be, you know, doing things with their kids and things like that, give them the time to do that and you know, that's why you have the flexible work arrangements. We're working in IT. Things are going to be around, and that's just the way things are going to be. Reconsider the open plan office layouts. They're terrible. Women feel like they have to be more dressed up when there's an open plan office space because they feel like they're looked at more, and there's more sexual harassment complaints in an open plan office space than there is in places that just have offices. So um, we need to go backwards in time. And then, of course, offer mental health insurance to people. What can you do as an employer to achieve wellness? You know, educate yourself and learn to develop empathy. There's a link at the end for this website that goes through all the mental health disorders and lets you look at things that, that are available. Provide work accommodations. I know in the U.S. we have ADA, so you can know what kind of work accommodations to provide. I don't know if there's a law in Canada for that or not, but here's a good website to go to to figure out what kind of accommodations would be good ones to ask for. But it's I don't know, like I said, if there's a law in Canada for that or any place else. And as a manager, lead by example. Set your own healthy boundaries about don't send emails after work or schedule them to come in during business hours. Practice your own self-care by taking mental health days. Don't don't be one of those managers who hardly ever takes off from work. I've got a manager that takes two weeks off every year and goes to Yellowstone and you can't reach him. Isn't that great? And ask for help if you if you need it. So now, what employers gain by, you know, providing you help? You get, you know, improved uh, attitudes toward mental health and decreased stigma around it. The employers are more engaged at work. They're more pr productive and they have more creativity. They have an overall sense of well-being. They trust the workplace more. 
they're satisfied with the leadership, so you might approve of your CEOs more, your managers more. Their, their interpersonal relationships with their coworkers improve. Uh, they have a sense of commitment and loyalty to the company, and you don't have that with other companies that don't help you out with that. They have a decrease in efficiency and errors, less people staying out of work because they, they don't have issues, um, less employee turnover because they're treating their employees good. And a decreased loss of revenue due to missed work because you remember that $1 trillion earlier, that, that's where this comes from, or the $210.5 billion, that's where this comes from. And the good news is 80% of treated employees report improvements. So if we can get people with mental health problems and issues to be able to allow them to have mental health days and seek help when they need it, they can you can prevent a lot of things and help your employees improve overall now we got the surviving the darn pandemic session without the word darn in there so there's only seven sections in here and some of it's repeated so one is to maintain your connections you know schedule some socials don't just write and send texts and stuff that's no fun for people you need more interaction Check in on your other people that you hadn't heard from, your family and friends. Share your experiences with people, hopefully not around COVID, though. Like, don't give them COVID. And, and you know, talk about things that aren't COVID-related. Um, stay calm. Don't panic over stuff. I know we got the new Delta virus going around, but I don't even turn on the news. Turn off the news. Use your local government websites to stay up to date in the WHO. Do stuff for yourself, anything at all. Go for a run, read a book, clean your house. Anything you can do that, you know, will get you out and about or, or keep you calm and not make you think of COVID. Um, develop a sense of happiness and get outside if you can. Get some sunshine. Get some exercise because that, that gets your endorphins running. Except that you aren't perfect. A lot of us are working from home and we, we got, you know, children running around. We've got, you know just things that are on our mind and we just aren't aren't doing things. I know um, I used to write in my journal three things I'm grateful for every, every day. And now based on the next one, look for the positives. I write three things that are positive every day that that have happened because I, I can't come up with three things to be grateful for during the pandemic. So and practice mindfulness this is where you get into yoga or just, you know, sit someplace quiet. And as far as coping goes, set boundaries between life and work, you know, try to work in a different room than where you do everything else or turn off your phone as far as work notifications after hours. Um, establish a routine of what you had before. So you want to make sure that the hours you use to commute are still kind of used for something that's work related or or something that's not used up so that way when you have to travel back into the office it doesn't feel like they're taking your time back away from you um take breaks um this is really hard for people to do now that they're working at home because uh they're used to not doing anything and they're used now we're used to taking 30 seconds and being in the restroom and being back to our desk so every hour or so get up and walk around for five minutes and because you don't sit at your desk eight hours a day at work so while I will be doing it at home. As far as your health goes, you know, physical and mental health are entwined, as we mentioned before. So as we mentioned, go outside if you can. Get some exercise. I know a lot of companies make videos available online. Um, do some meditation or yoga. As we mentioned before, eat healthy. Make sure your sleep's good. Stress has a tendency to mess this up. Uh, try not working in your bedrooms. That has a tendency to mess things up as well. Um, and stay off your work stuff after hours again. Like I said, some of this stuff is a little bit repetitive, but it, it fits into different categories. And the last one is feel a sense of fulfillment. Because you want to feel productive, even though it feels like you're not doing as much work because you're remote and you're not able to communicate as much with your uh, other colleagues. But don't overwork. Just do what you can in your allotted amount of time. You don't want to be doing that 55 hours of work and developing dementia later in life. Again, we want to take regular breaks. We want to chat to our family, friends, and colleagues not about work or COVID. 
Set agreement with your boss on what realistic goes, goals are based on your situation. If you got kids running around, things going on at your house, you're taking care of your in-laws or your grandparents or just your parents in general, you may have to set goals based on the fact that you have these situations going on in your house and, and they're going to they're going to have to try to respect that and stick to some sort of routine. Routines are very vital for me. Um, they, they keep me sane, so to speak. And feel a sense of accomplishment even with small tasks. I have a tendency to write down a list of tasks every day, three big things I want to get done and smaller things I need to get done. And then I like putting little check marks beside of them. It's, it's very satisfying. And look for out for others that might be feeling alone. So people that you hadn't heard from in a while, you know, check on them and see how they're doing. And I go back to this quote because I really like it. Mental health isn't just mental illness. It's just part of being human from somebody. I don't remember where I got it from. So these are some podcasts to listen to. I meant to update this list as well because I've found some other ones. But you can Google some. Um. I'll try to update this before I upload it to my website again. Um, these are some blog posts that have been written by some people in the community that you can look at. Um, I think there was a mental health one for a T sequel one out at the bottom, so you can get a whole bunch of those. Um, then there's a whole bunch of slides at the end where I did some research. And at the very end, I put the self evaluation again so you can get to it very easily and figure out where you want, where what category you're in. I would suggest if you're in the orange or the red that you probably need to talk to a therapist or a therapist and definitely a doctor if you're in the red and try to try to get some help. Any more questions? Um, if people prefer, I can, uh, yeah, People are asking about your slides. We will post uh, slides if Tracy provides them. I believe you mentioned that. Okay. No Did problem. Did you mention that? Yeah, I can give them to you to post, yes. Excellent. Um, so we'll be able to post that. We also have a YouTube channel where we post recordings. Give us a little bit of time to get those up. <laughs> um, thank you folks for attending. Um, I'm going to stop the recording in case anybody has any other questions that maybe they don't want recorded. Give me one moment.